thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and our ranking member. I want to thank the witnesses for being here today as well, and to Ms. Spates in particular. Thank you for true and clear and therefore compelling testimony and for being willing to talk about your own personal situation. It makes a real difference. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your work on this issue over the years, including on importation and allowing the federal government to negotiate Medicare drug prices. I believe there's bipartisan support in the Senate for legislation that meaningfully lowers the cost of prescription drugs, and we need to take action this year. I want to ask questions to you, Dr. Kesselheim, uh, following up on Senator Baldwin's line of questioning. Drug companies often try to justify high prices by saying that they use this revenue to fund innovation for future breakthrough medications. And we all support innovations that effectively treat and cure diseases. But we also know that American taxpayers subsidize a significant portion of the research that leads to these innovations. So, Dr. Kesselheim, let's just make clear who makes the majority of investments in the research that leads to breakthrough therapies and treatments for unmet health needs. Is it the drug companies or the American taxpayer? Well, I mean, I think it is, uh, you know, there is usually a, um, a combination of, uh, of, uh, of factors that go into these kinds of discoveries. And so our studies have shown and other studies have shown that a substantial amount of basic and translational science, the vast majority of basic and translational science is funded by publicly funded systems. And then privately funded entities come in um, later in the phase in the in the development process to lead uh, you know clinical trials and, and the regulatory approval process. So it is a little bit of a um, of a you know a, a, a sort of a, a combination of of both forces. But, but our is, study. But, but I'm, I'm going to just stop you because I want to get to other questions too. Sure. But it is a substantial amount of this uh, innovation funding comes from the American taxpayer. Yes, and it, the origins of particular, as you mentioned, the origins of transformative drugs often come from publicly funded sources, even through proof of concept and some of the and some you know clinical testing of them. Okay, so okay. now let's let's move on to uh, the broader topic here. Drug companies receive taxpayer support at just about every step of their business model, from the time a drug is developed to the time a pharmacy dispenses it to a patient. We are the only country that subsidizes these companies the way we do, yet according to a recent RAM study, we are paying up to 250% more for prescription drugs than countries with similar GDP. Dr. Kesselheim, I want to ask you about some of the tax breaks and subsidies that drug companies receive from American taxpayers. And I have several examples to get through in a limited amount of time, so if you can keep your answers brief, that would be helpful. Drug companies receive billions of dollars in tax credits that subsidize the cost of ads that they run on television, online, and in print. Have these tax credits led to lower drug prices or more innovation for patients? No. Okay, now drug companies also establish charities that promote the drugs that they sell and receive tax deductions when they donate to those charities. A city research report found that every $1 million a drug company donates to these charities can return up to $21 million in increased revenue. Briefly, if you can, Dr. Kesselheim, why are drug companies choosing to put billions of dollars into these charities instead of simply lowering the price of their drugs? Well, those charities can help people have, who have high out-of-pocket costs and have no other choices but to, to take that drug. Um, but what as a result of, of helping uh, individual patients with their high out-of-pocket costs, Drug companies are making a lot of money on the payments that insurance companies make uh, that that are behind the scenes uh, and are be able to sustain the high prices so that they can charge high prices for other payers. Right. So they could just lower their prices overall, and that would make uh, a difference for the patients. We do have some transparency, that, though, through the Medicare open payments database into payments drug companies make to prescribers in 2019. Companies gave away $2.3 billion in cash payments, free meals, and speaking fees, an average of over $3,700 to each prescriber who received a payment. And research shows that these payments influence prescribing. Dr. Kesselheim, why are companies choosing to spend billions of dollars each year on payments to prescribers instead of putting the money toward lowering the price of their drugs? Well, those prices actually increase drug prices because they go to um, encourage uh, um, people, uh, pay, uh, physicians to, to prescribe the high priced products over lower priced generic drugs because generic manufacturers don't advertise their products. 
Well, thank you, Dr. Kesselheim. These are just a few examples of the uniquely American tools that the drug industry has at its disposal. So it should be no surprise that the cost of prescription drugs in America are uniquely high. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to continuing this important work with you and our colleagues. Thank you, Senator Hassan. Senator